<laughs> um, okay, <clears throat> so 11.02 today, uh, slightly later because I was just rambling and just annoying everyone in the room. Um, <clears throat> but welcome back to the, the next, the fourth virtual bridge session. Uh, and today I'm delighted to have royalty in the room. Um, Lizzie, 2019 Learning Technologist of the Year. I mean, does it get any better than that? I mean, how, what's your next step after that, Lizzie? I mean, what, what do you do? I mean, where do you uh, go? Well, domination. Ah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm fine with that. I've, I've met you. I, 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 could, I could live with that. There, there, there are worse world leaders out there. Um, <laughs> I'm totally for that. Okay. So um, today's session is around YouTube and specifically captioning. Now, this is particularly relevant because back in 2018, oh so long ago, um, in the days of the iPhone 10, I, I, I've decided that to measure all things just by the version of iPhone that came out of that year. Um, <clears throat> it's, my, it's my frame of reference for my children, really. That's all they understand at the minute. Um, <clears throat> So back then there was the public sector bodies, web accessibility and mobile application guidelines had come out. And, and basically it set the, this pretty, pretty strict WCAG 2.1 AA standard. We'll stick a link in somewhere. Um, and it's basically all digital content uh, now has to conform to that standard. And part of that is getting your captioning right in in YouTube and, and other video content. So this, this is particularly useful and it's something that a lot of people are struggling with um, and we'll probably do a session on it uh, later on. But <clears throat> until then, <gasps> learning technologist of the year, <laughs> Lizzie Seymour is with us today and I will hand over to her. <laughs> Thanks Kenji. Hi everyone. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I'm Lizzie. Um, I'm Learning Technology Officer for the Royal Zoological Society of Scotland. So I'm normally based in Edinburgh Zoo. Um, so I've got Roberta here to keep me company because uh, I'm missing them all uh, working from home. Um, I also work at the Highland Wildlife Park as well. Um, and so I thought that this was something that um, I've done quite a bit of and I thought it's, it's so buried in the YouTube settings that maybe it would be useful to, to show everybody else how to do it. Um, so forgive me if you already know and I'm preaching to the choir, um, but I thought it would be interesting. Um, as Kenji says, it's really important for the accessibility stuff, but I think it's also quite important at the moment um, with so many people uh, like working from home, learning from home, um, a lot of people tend to do that on mobile devices and on mobile devices, you most often don't even have the sound on. Um, <coughs> so having captions um, are important there as well. Um, and as anyone who has ever turned the captions on on YouTube knows, they're, they're dodgy. Uh, you get some really weird words coming up, um, particularly when you work for a society called RZSS. And there's some very strange things that get translated when anyone in a different accent says RZSS. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do that. So I will share my screen. Here we go. So hopefully you can all see my YouTube homepage now. And the Zoom thing is right in the way of where I need to click, uh, hopefully. <laughs> um, so we're on YouTube um, and I'm logged in to our um, Discovery and Learning account. So this is the one where we put our videos up. We actually don't have very many at the moment. And um, that is this week's task. Uh, but I will be showing you things. So obviously you need to log in before you do this. I'm going to be working with a couple of videos that I've already uploaded um, because I imagine that most people know how to add a video to YouTube. It's over here on upload video. So you would go, you've got your menu down the side um, and if you go to your videos, um, it takes you into the list of your videos. Um, helpfully. <laughs> and then if we go to YouTube Studio, which is where you do a lot of the edits of things. Um, so you've kind of got your dashboard for all your channels um, and we're interested today in videos. Uh, so this is quite a quick run through. Obviously the recording will be available online and I can put it together in a sort of note format as well afterwards if, if people prefer reading rather than listening to me talking. I can happily do that. Um, and so you can see the list of our videos here. Um, so the one that I just literally uploaded today um, is one of myself doing a video about tapirs. Um, so here it's a, the most boring video in the world. It doesn't move, it's just a photo, but it's my voice and that's what we need for captions. 
Um, so if you hover over the video and you've got the details, which is the little pencil. Um, and if you click that one and go to, uh, so then you can add the description and the title. Um, this is part of a whole range of videos that we're starting to do for Edinburgh Zoo called Zoo in Two. And we're getting all the staff to um, talk about their favourite animal for two minutes. Um, so you thought I was teaching you about YouTube today, but actually I'm teaching you about tapirs. Uh, <laughs> so if we go into more options. Um, and scroll down, you can see the subtitles. And here are the English automatic subtitles that YouTube have generated. So I uploaded this probably about 20 minutes ago and it takes them a little while to add the captions. Um, so they won't be there as soon as you upload a video, but they appear eventually by magic. Um, so you click on the automatic ones and you can edit them in the classic studio. And then it brings up your video over here and the captions that YouTube have automatically generated down the side. And what you can do is you can play the video. I don't know whether you can hear my audio or not. Um, but here we go, tape ears. That is not the animal that I'm talking about. Um, so I need to edit that. So there's an edit button up here. Um, you click that and the page reloads um, and then you can edit all of the text then becomes editable. So this is the stuff that YouTube has auto generated. So I'm just going to go in here and tell it that I'm talking about tapirs. And again, no ears. Um, <laughs> tapirs. There we go. Oh, and Lizzie's got an eye. There we go. And then you just save changes. Um, and it updates for you, it publishes them. And so now if I press play, you'll see that, if I press play and actually turn the captions on, you'll see that it's got Lizzie with the IE and the proper tapirs. Um, and so that is the quickest and easiest way to correct your captions. Um, if you go back into that one um, with the English here, so it's English automatic is the generated ones and then it gives you another one, which is your edited one. So it keeps both versions. Um, so English is, is the one that I edited here. Um, you can also, if I scroll down a bit so I can see it, you can also adjust the timings of things. So um, imagine that this one runs on a bit long. So you can, oh, should be able to, doing this on the fly and it never works. Um, <laughs> You can skip through your video and then you should be able to, obviously it was a video, then the pitch would change, but it's static. Um, somewhere, um, usually you can change the shape of these boxes as well so that it doesn't go on quite as long or you can change the times. It's because I haven't got edit on, there we go. <laughs> um, so now you can make these boxes longer or shorter. You can have a gap between your, your captions um, and you can completely edit them so that they're completely correct to the timings, the spellings um, and everything. Uh, so I'll save those changes, um, publish those and then it reloads. Um, and so you've got the automatic ones that YouTube generated and the English ones that you've just edited yourself and you can click and edit those as many times as you like. Um, and so that's the easiest way of making them make sense. Um, but there are several other ways, which I'll show you. I think, was there a question or something in the chat that popped up? I'll just double check. Yes, um, so Scott asks if anybody can extract all the text and timings into the CSV. Um, you can, so you can run an automatic spell check on them. Um, you can do that. I can't remember how, so we'll find out together. <laughs> um, so if I go to, I think it's add new subtitles um, under here, you can add, um, add them for other languages. So it will auto generate them um, in other languages if it detects that it thinks, so we've got one where we are of course speaking English, but it for some reason thinks we're speaking Spanish. Um, so that's one that needs editing. Um, but you can, you can also put subtitles on if, if you're multilingual, you can translate them yourself um, into other languages as well. So we'll return to YouTube Studio up here. Go back to my videos. Um, and then let's see if I can remember how to upload them. So it's under more options again. This is the same place that we went before. And then if you go to upload subtitles here, 
so you can have it without timing and you can literally just upload um it's a txt file and you can literally just upload your script that so that was a voiceover so i read it from a script um, and you can literally upload it and youtube will auto detect if the audio is clear enough it will fit the text to the timings itself um, or you can add the timings into your txt file and um, there's a specific format that youtube takes for that um, which you can find online and i can provide a link to later um, but there is a way to download these so if you I think it's this one so it's got the automatic so you press the dot and if you download them my mac is asking me every single time whether i want to let it download things um so it's downloaded those um zoom is in the way again so if i get my downloads up um so it comes into a strange format actually so that wasn't useful um, <laughs> um but if you edit them again Uh, do, do, do. There was a way to download them. Is it here? Download. Um, so you can download them in several different formats, um, which you should be able to edit in most text editors, um, and then re upload them again. And then for other videos, there is another cool little trick as I'm about halfway through. So I'll move on to the other way of doing captions. Um, I'll take this one, this lovely video of our old department head, not old, um, ex-department head, Suzanne. Um, so she's telling everybody about Ruby and Zed, who are the little girl and alien mascots behind her there. Um, so if we go into the same again, more options, and then if here, if we click subtitles instead, um, we can, you've got the option for the automatic ones, and then you've got the option to add your own. So if you press add, instead this is a completely different way of doing it which is longer winded than just editing the auto captions but if it's got it completely wrong or um or you're using very specialist terms or you want them in a different language you can go here so here's how you upload the file um if you've already got one um, and then you can also transcribe which is actually quite fun um, so if you click the transcribe and auto sync you can start typing so you can press play and the video will run And then you just need to type um, what you're hearing. Um, obviously you're not hearing this, so I need to do the captions for you. And so it pauses the video when you start typing to do the transcription. When you stop typing, it gives you about a second or two and then it starts playing again. So you can keep, um, you can just keep typing um, the captions in as you hear audio in the video. Um, and then you go to set timings and it tries to put the timings in as you were typing them. So it takes the timings of the video where it paused them while you typed and it puts those in. And then you can tweak them in exactly the same way with the timeline as we tweaked the other ones. So. Mizu, that's supposed to say Edinburgh State, just in case anyone didn't get that. Um, but that is essentially it. So there are the, the three ways of doing of doing the captions. Um, you can, so as we said, you can, um, you can edit YouTube's auto ones, you can upload your own, or you can type as you watch a video. Um, and I think that was it. That was really quick. I'm sorry. <laughs> But if anyone has any questions, um, please, please do ask. No, it, it, it's, it's not quick. It's just, see, as, as learning technologist of the year, you are clearly, clearly just so professional that you can just get <laughs> through the content like that. That's, 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 that's what I want to be when I grow sure. up. I want to be you. <laughs> Don't call me grown up. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I, I found it interesting because um, I ran into a situation uh, yesterday where we were working with a charity group, uh, Who Cares Scotland, um, which is really interesting because they usually just refer to themselves as Who Cares. Um, so in, in conversation, it's really funny. But um, <clears throat> I, although it's a very serious charity and it, it deals with the, the uh, care experienced groups uh, within education and in wider society. So uh, anyway, they have... Um, 
they've recorded a series of videos that we're using for, for um, a purpose to um, teach organizations more about care experience groups. And they use Vimeo as their channel. And Vimeo doesn't have auto captioning. So they were struggling with the idea. I, I know you just said it was fun potentially to write transcripts for, for two minutes. If you're not doing hundreds of them, if you're just doing the odd <laughs> video, it's quite fun, it, like the way it pauses. And <laughs> it, yeah, I mean, their, their ones are, 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 I don't know, 10, 15, 20 minutes. So yeah, it, it, it's tough going after a while. But um, yeah, it was, it was good because then we thought about getting potentially, you can upload a transcript into Vimeo, but you can't generate one for free. So we were talking about potentially taking their video, putting it temporarily into YouTube and getting doing doing the transcription there. And now that you've explained how to download the the VTT file or the SRT or SVS that files, then we could take that format with the timings and upload them directly into Vimeo and and get the benefit of of, of transcription in Vimeo with you know using the stuff in YouTube. That that's pretty awesome. And it is a requirement by <laughs> public sector uh, use. So, so. <laughs> um, Scott's asked the question. Uh, the use of YouTube in institutions uh, is interesting. Anybody else restricted to using an institutional account rather than personal? I'm thinking mainly about the implications for teaching material if somebody leaves and decides to delete resources. That's a really good question. I mean, from our point of view, um, Obviously, we're not a sort of university institution, but um, at, at the zoo, we've got um, the Edinburgh Zoo channel, the Highland Wildlife Park channel, and then the education channel. Um, and so we've got very clear guidelines about what goes on each um, and nothing goes on personal accounts. Um, I don't know if anyone else wants to speak for universities and colleges. Um, and so it's, have you tried any of the other um, platforms other than YouTube? I mean, do you find Vimeo or, or now increasingly within institutions, people are using um, Microsoft Stream, for example. Mm -hmm. um, there's also ClickView, which is a common platform, a media platform in colleges. I, I don't even know if ClickView has auto captioning. Does, does, anyone, does anyone know? If you're using an alternative sort of media repository system within your institution? ClickView does. I feel, I feel Scott can say that. <laughs> I like speaking for Scott, but his voice just sounds better than mine. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so quick view can do auto captioning as well, Scott. Right, okay. And Scott really does have a nice voice. I, I'm telling you, we, we are missing <laughs> out by just not hearing him. This is, it's... It's, it's good. Um, <clears throat> so what, what else, why, why do you, have you always used captions then? Um, was it yes, um, yeah, so I think it's important for accessibility um, and I've always been uh, quite passionate about accessibility even before um, all these sort of new law changes and stuff, um, which don't actually apply directly to us in the zoo. Um, we're not a public sector organization. Um, but I'm still, uh, doing a drive to get everything um, digital more accessible. Um, and so I think it is important to provide just things in as many formats as possible, um, whether that's video or whatever. So that's why I said, you know, I'll give a step-by-step -step instru instructions along with this, um, just to give everyone options really. Um, so I like YouTube because it lets you do the edits. We do um, across our other channels, we also use quite a lot of Facebook video. Um, which does now do auto captions, but I don't know. I haven't found a way to edit those yet to correct them. Um, so we get another lot of very strange RZSSs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> although actually the auto captions on Facebook are um, more reliable than YouTube ones. Um, the language options in Facebook are actually just amazing for auto translate as well, um, because they are completely crowdsourced. So people can go in and correct things themselves um so facebook is um is getting better <laughs> <laughs> i'm just i'm just going to switch back to to 
kind of our view uh, of everyone. Um, just because yes, I, I see Suzanne's right. face and, and she looked very <laughs> stressed there uh, and I, I felt bad for her. I think she got about 10 minutes notice before taking that video. <laughs> Um, oh, Audrey uh, has just asked, uh, what happened to TeacherTube? Um, that's right, TeacherTube used to be a separate channel that was just a collection of educational videos on, on YouTube. Um, I, I didn't realize it had gone, but apparently it must have. Um, what, one question I was going to ask, Lizzie, because you do, you do a lot of recording um, at the zoo. And yep. I was just wondering, one of the key things about the auto transcription is you get better auto transcription if the voice quality is really clear. Yes. So do you have any tips around like how you record voice when you're when you're doing these kind of recordings? Um, so in the zoo, it's very difficult because it's a very noisy and outdoor area. So it is the tip is just buy the best mic you can get um, <laughs> at home. Um, we're doing we're doing a lot of um, individual video recordings. So if you keep an eye on our YouTube channel, um, not not a subtle plug, um, then you'll, we'll, we'll be putting out lots more videos in the coming days to help people um, learning from home. Um, but, um, and so we've got all of our sort of discovery and learning, all of our education staff at home recording their own uh, voiceovers and videos. Um, and we're mostly doing that just with the mics on our laptops or on our phones. Um, and the advice for that is um, to not hold the mic too close to your mouth, um, because if you're not using a professional grade mic, um, just having it a distance away from you, the same distance that I am from my screen at the moment sort of distance, um, it reduces all of the popping noises that you get when you say the letter P. Um, and just to think, to pay attention to the background noises that you're in. So um, there are things that you just tune out automatically, like the sound of your radiator pipes, um, the, your boiler, your kettle on in the background, and you don't hear those. But as soon as you listen back on video, it's all you can hear. Um, <laughs> So it's worth just paying attention to the background. You don't need a good quality mic um, if you're indoors and you're in a quiet space. So. Okay. And, and, and I agree that I, I remember from, from games development um, a long time ago when I had friends involved with that. And, and this was back in the day of like Super Nintendos and, and such. Um, but they, <laughs> they had, again, it's, it's going back to my age, but they had said that when, you, when you're playing a game, one of the key things about video too was audio quality, even over video quality. Um, because when people are listening, especially on headphones, it's if you have a clear voice, even if the, the bass is a bit fuzzy like mine, um, if you have a clear voice and that, that quality is good, that, you know, that trumps other experiences when you're watching stuff like this, um, as long as that part's clear. So um, has anyone else got something to share? Um, just around uh, video captioning or subtitling. Uh, just, just as a, a, a quick note, uh, that again, from my English teaching background, um, one, you know the P sound that you mentioned that comes out? Plosives, plosives. And yeah, apparently there you go, technical term. Um, the difference between subtitling and captioning. Uh, captioning is when it's in the, the same language as is being spoken. And subtitling only refers to when it's translated to another language. I know that's it. Moments of trivia. What can I say? You came here to learn about captioning, but there you go. You're just picking up on all the good stuff now. Sorry. Amazing. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> so, Jason, can you tell us something about the wider use of captioning, well, perhaps, uh, in recordings? Well, I was going to go back and actually ask a question, first oh, of all. Okay. For me, and that's, uh, and though I, I don't know if I've got uh, anyone from the AV crowd, it might be more to that. One of my frustrations is I've been searching for ages for a Bluetooth lapel mic. Um, I have a lapel mic with about oh, about eight metres of cord, which is quite handy for uh, recording, but it uh, invariably gets wrapped up around my legs and God knows what. Um, so um, I don't, has anyone come across such? We've got some for doing podcasts. Um, we just bought them off of Amazon. There was a selection there so that we could do a dual recording. It's that Keki Steam in the Gates and the technical spec around it. Um, just so as we could do uh, two or three channels. I hope you're not using one at the moment because you sound a little bit underwater. Um, <laughs> uh, see, do you know, I don't know why that is. I think my, um, my headphones actually might be, my mic's sort of like giving up, I think. Too much zooming. <laughs> uh, I, I think so. No, yeah. I'm not using one just now. <laughs> yeah. The, um, yeah, usually lapel mics, um, from, from a professional recording point of view, is, the, is a little... 
pill mm. mic that's connect to a, a transceiver that you attach to you know your pocket or your belt or whatever and then that transmits to a base station but i've not seen one that's um, bluetooth usually these work off you know um uhf rf frequencies so um just radio transmitters um so that allows you to work from a distance um but i don't does anyone know of a, 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 a like a, a cheaper bluetooth solution perhaps I, that's okay. I'm I'm off to look at Amazon after this. Uh, likewise, yeah. <laughs> I, I did have a look a while back and didn't see any, which I thought was a bit of a gap because the idea of just being able to have a quickly USB rechargeable lapel mic um, that connected directly up seemed good to me. And admittedly, in this current circumstance, getting hold of them might be interesting as well, even if they are available. But um, I think it would allow, as you said, good quality recording to be made quickly. So Jason, do you know, is, are there any like good resources online? Uh, does Jason produce any uh, info guides around um, recording or th this, yes, this kind uh, of area? Funnily enough, yes, there is, though I'd have to go and search it myself. Um, and so uh, my usual advice is to Google just <laughs> captioning or uh, whatever. And um, if you uh, don't Google, if you want to use another search engine other than Google, just Google it is my usual thing. <laughs> Uh, you know, alternative search engines. Um, yes, uh, there's a variety of different contexts and from different angles. Uh, we've got some on technical aspects and we've got some on how um, it, that all fits in with teaching and learning and also from accessibility and inclusion angle as well. We've got quite a bit. So, um, And if you've got any other questions, of course, we have our um, subject specialists um, that can then help out in this. But um, I think we've covered quite a lot. Uh, very much thanks to Lizzie's input there. <laughs> Okay, so um, <clears throat> we are coming uh, uh, close to, to 11.30 just now. Um, so uh, this is the end of the first week. <gasps> Sorry, I'm, I'm kind of kind of excited by that. Um, we, we made it to, to session four um, and, and nothing went seriously wrong. Well, a, a few things went seriously wrong, but I'm, I'm going to save those for the, the blooper reel that we're producing uh, <laughs> later on. But what I can say is that we, we do have a full program for, for next week. Uh, thanks, James, for doing that <laughs> just now. Um, so we, on, on Tuesday, when we start up again, um, uh, Nader Jermuz from Fort Valley College is going to give us a bit of talk around MS Teams, um, which is obviously a popular subject around about now. And just to move away from Microsoft for a second, uh, on Wednesday, we have James Ritchie from Fife College, who's, who does a lot of work with Google with these students, um, G Suite uh, and other aspects. So he's going to give us a quick overview of some of the G Suite for education options that you might be able to cover, which is really interesting. Um, and James it will be joining us on Thursday uh, for James from West College Scotland. Uh, will be joining us to talk a bit about how to generate reports uh, from Moodle um, using, using a customized kind of reporting solution that he has set up. And on Friday, we have David Hiddleston from Edinburgh College, who's coming in to talk about the last thing that I've forgotten, digital literacy. Digital literacy. I should really open up these windows uh, while I'm talking about it. So a full week next week. So you do have the weekend to sort of hang back. And obviously, I will be looking forward to the presentations from, I'm just pointing because it's on my screen. You're all over my screen. Um, um, Scott, Scott, obviously, future presentation. Definitely going to speak to Jackie about that. Looking forward to that one. Um, I, can, I can see Alistair. Alistair, who has possibly, is, is still there right beside me on my screen. Uh, Alistair will be doing something uh, on electrons and circuit theory. Circuit theory. Well, like, okay, because I, I have a problem with my, my shower at the moment. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm totally tuning in for that. Uh, that'll be awesome. Um, <clears throat> I, I'm sure more of us here uh, can contribute. And so if you have time, just jump into the open Google Doc. Um, so until next week and the booming program that we'll see and probably a, a larger audience once we start um, promoting this on Monday. Um, stay safe, look after yourselves. And uh, yeah. I'll see you on Tuesday, hopefully. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>